Stephanie here, but I am not Dr. Stephanie in case you guys haven't figured it out, even though everybody always asks if we're like related because apparently we look a lot alike. Um, it's a funny story. Actually, um, Stephanie and I met through my best friend and both her and I were already coaches when we met. So uh, my best friend and Stephanie are cousins. And so that's how we met. We had no idea who each other was before then. And we actually met, we didn't meet through Beachbody. So it's a funny story. And we've known each other for a really long time because I remember meeting her right as I had signed up. I had hit, just hit Diamond when I met her. And she was like, oh, yeah, that's cool. Like, she was just starting up herself. So it was really, really cool. Um, so for those of you that don't know me, um, I my name is Bianca O'Brien. I am a coach uh, I've on the Dream Team under Melanie Mitro. I have been um, in as, as a coach since 2013. I started in 2013, but I actually started off as, um, as a client. I just had a ton of weight to lose. I gained 65 pounds in my pregnancy with my middle one. And I've always been really active. So when I gained all that weight, because I had like, I had had trouble getting pregnant. And so when I got pregnant, my doctor was like, you need to stop everything you're doing. At that point, I was running about five miles every day. And I really love to run. And a doctor was like, well, I think that's a little bit excessive. So he's like, we're going to stop the physical activities because that could be causing or not helping you uh, with your miscarriages. And so I, I stopped everything I was doing. And I, I literally felt like my uterus was going to fall out if I did any kind of physical activity after I heard that. And so I stopped everything and I gained a ton of weight. I just ate a ton. I, if you follow me on social media, you know, I love cake. Cake is my favorite thing. <laughs> and so I end up eating a lot. I ended up eating a lot of cake and doing no exercise. So I gained 65 pounds. And I went, after I had the baby, I thought to myself, well, I've never had trouble losing weight. So this should be no problems, right? Should be no problem. So I went back to doing everything I was doing before and nothing was really working. For, we had moved to Florida and I couldn't run anymore. So that was gone. And I tried to go like to a gym or, you know, I tried to do other things and nothing was really fitting in like with my schedule. And so I was really frustrated and I just, that just contributed to everything else. And I got, I had like a little bit of postpartum anxiety, um, depression and anxiety. And I was just, I was at a loss. I didn't know what else to do. I was doing all kinds of crazy diets, trying every single magic pill that anybody offered me. Whatever you name it, I was trying it, South Beach cookie diet, HCG diet, I tried it all, nothing worked. And so it was 11 months, I remember till this day, um, it was 11 months after Ali had been born and we, at, up at, until that point, I had really isolated myself where I saw none of my friends anymore. I didn't want anybody to see me because I had gone up to 205 pounds and I'm like, 130 pounds normally so it was really it was really weighing me down I didn't want any of my friends to see me and so up until that point I had done a really good job of masking it and putting on a smile and pretending like everything was okay and then that fine day my husband said no we have to go out my my cousin is here from 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 LA he's here to visit we're gonna have to go out to dinner and I went into the closet to to grab something to wear and of course, I couldn't find anything, right? Nothing fit me. And I remember going out to that dinner wearing maternity pants, and I remember putting those on and crying my eyes out and saying, that's it. I got to do something. This is it. This I cannot live like this anymore. And so I remember that one of my good friends was doing some kind of like home workout program, and it was with the bald guy. This is all I knew. And I said, I'm going to do what she's doing. So I didn't go to her. I knew she was a coach, but I didn't go to her. I just went off Craigslist and I bought Insanity on my own. And I started doing it from home, not fixing my nutrition, not doing anything. And obviously it wasn't working. You know, I, I liked the fact that I was working out again. That was fun, but I, I wasn't dropping any weight. I lost like four pounds doing Insanity in one month because I was still eating cheeseburgers and pizza at night. And I was like, there is no way I'm going to drink a yucky shake. Like there is no way that anybody's going to get me to do that. And so finally, like frustrated after a whole month doing it, I reached out to her. And then she was like, you are doing the wrong program, girlfriend. You should not be doing Insanity at 205 pounds without having exercise in two years. And so she got me with T25. And I started doing, after a month of T25, I dropped 17 pounds, drinking Shakeology and 
clean in cleaning up my nutrition. And it was that, it was that fast. I dropped like 30, 32 pounds in the first, uh, with D25 in the first two months. And so I was hooked and I was really hesitant to become any kind of a coach. She kept telling me from the beginning, because we had gone to nursing school together. She's like, you'd be amazing at this. And I'm like, no, 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 there is no way. I am not going to sell things and there's no way you're going to get me to do this. And so I stuck that out for about two years, um, just doing, doing everything I was doing. And people were asking me and I was signing them up, but I was definitely not working the business at all. Um, and she kept trying to tell me to do it, but I was like, there's no way. First of all, I was super busy. I was one trying to still lose that 70 pounds that I had to lose. Right. Um, the other, I was, I had just started my job as a nurse. I was a new nurse and I was still like learning everything. And did I mention I work as a flight attendant and I had a newborn at home. So with all this stuff going on, I'm like, there is no freaking way. So I gave you guys all that backstory to kind of show you guys what I was going to talk about that Stephanie asked me to talk about, which is time management, because everybody looks at my life and is like, you have to be like, there's no way, like there has to be some kind of magic power in your life because there's no way that you can do all that you do and still be a coach. There's no way that you can do all this stuff. And so everybody's always asking me, like, how do you manage to do all this? And so I gave you guys that backstory so you understand where I started, where I was when I started, because I feel like when I sign up most of my coaches, this where I started is where they, you know, is where they are now, right? You already have so many things juggling. There's probably something that drew you into this opportunity that probably speaks to giving you more freedom, right? Time, freedom, freedom to be home with your family. And so if you're craving that, it's probably because you don't have that right now. So how do we make this business work when we don't have that, right? If we don't have this, if that's the thing that we're looking for, how do we create it? And basically I feel like that is exactly what I've done because I have been able to, I've been a coach for five years, like almost going on six years. And for the first two years, I didn't really work the business. But then after, after ever since I did start working the business, I've been able to quit my nursing job. I've been able to replace my nursing salary. And now I do have time freedom and I do, I still work as a flight attendant, but it's because I want to, I fly like two or th two, two or three trips a month. And mostly it's, to places where I want to go. Like I just came back from Paris a couple of days ago. And so I have that flexibility in my schedule to do the things that I wanted to do. I really did create that time freedom for myself and for my family, but that didn't come without sacrifice. But I wanted to show you guys, like give you practical tips on how I do that, because I feel like that's what people need. Like you don't need to know what you need to do. You need to know how to do it, right? Like how do you do it on a daily day basis? So it looked very different when I started and I was working as a nurse though, because at that point in my business, when I was first starting, I really needed to work in pockets. I didn't have any time freedom. And so I was working, If are there any nurses here? You guys, healthcare professionals, you guys know? We work 12 hour shifts, but they're not 12 hour shifts. They're really like 14, 15 hour shifts, right? Because I used to go into work at like five o'clock in the morning, and not come home until 8 p.m. And so that was my reality. And so when I was doing that, I was literally getting up to work out at four o'clock in the morning so I could get my post in. That first thing that I did in the morning, that, that workout and that post was what created my consistency that allowed people to see that I was the real deal right? That I can single-handedly tell you guys that going into like getting up at four o'clock in the morning, getting my workout in and posting because I did that every single day, that in people's minds, I remember people telling me like, I don't know how you do it, but I see that you're doing it. And if you can do it, I can do it. And they saw it every single day. And this was something that I learned from Melanie. If you follow Melanie Mitro, you will see that she does this every single day at 6, 630 in the morning. You can go and you can see in her page, she's posting her workout still. And so that consistency was needed and I knew that. So that was the first thing I did when I first got up was workout and I would post whatever post for the day. Usually I would type it out the day before because I didn't have time to start, stop to think okay, what am I going to post today? So I would do it like a day behind. I would take my picture today and that would be my post for tomorrow. And I would never have like five minutes. I would write the post so that next day when I was working out, after I was done working out, I could just post that picture and, and put it, post whatever I had typed up the day before. And I would do that in advance, right? And so that was one thing that I did because I didn't have time in the morning. 
then I would listen to personal development on my way to work. And that was like a, that was a game changer for me because when I started and my friend was asking me to be a coach, I did not have the confidence that I could be anybody's coach. That was zero. Like I did not believe in myself at all. It's like, nobody's going to want this girl that's still overweight, doesn't know what she's doing to be her coach. And that personal development on the way to work, I remember, I remember the first book I ever read was um, Awaken the Giant Within from Tony Robbins. And that completely changed my perspective. I read GoPro right in the beginning, or I didn't read. I was listening to it on the way to work. I had a half hour commute and I would listen to it on the way there. Right, and all that was how I started my day, my workout and my PT. And guess what? Five years later, that's still how I start off my day. I always get up, work out, post, and, and listen to my personal development. So that consistency, not only in other people's minds, but also in my mind, that also created a routine where everybody's always asking me like, how do you not skip a day? I don't skip a day ever, <laughs> ever. I was nine months pregnant and I, had, I worked out the day I had my baby at nine months. <laughs> and so I don't skip workouts. And how I'm able to do that is that routine that I've established for myself. And so that will go for you and that will go for people who are following you. They will learn, they will see that, they will expect that. And you will start to expect it. If I don't post my workout, people are asking me, they're texting me and they're messaging me, are you okay? Why didn't you work out today? You want that. You want that kind of accountability from other people. And you want to be that person that is that consistent, right? And so the other thing that I would do is I would send my invites before I left for work. And I sent like three to five invites every day when I was, you know, starting off, it wasn't many at all. And I, to this day, I usually send between three to five invites each day, unless I have time to do more, but that's basically what I do. And so I would send out those invites before I went into work, Well, whoever liked my post the day before, those are the people that got my invites, you know, and I just worked off a list. And I always have, and I still work off a, off a list, the same way that I started, I haven't changed my system at all, you guys. I still work with pen and paper. I know there's fancy stuff out there, but I still do the same thing. I just put out the numbers. I put out how many, who I talked to that day. I highlight the name of anybody who's interested, so I'm sure to follow up with them the next month. Still do the same thing every single day. I have not changed it. And so don't, don't, that's another thing that I've learned. Don't question your systems. You have to stick with them long enough to make sure that they do work. And obviously some months are going to be easier than others. Like some months I hit success club 10 in like the first two or three days of the month. Some months I'm struggling. I'm going to be honest with you guys this month. I don't know if anybody else is having a hard, a hard month, but I am struggling big time this month. I don't know what happened. I don't, I don't remember the last time that, hi, yeah, we say hi. Hi. All right. <laughs> you can go down and close the door. <laughs> You, got, you it, does, it hasn't happened like this in a very long time, but I'm not questioning my system. I know that my system works. I just know that it is, that's what it is, that some months are going to be harder than others. And when you have a system that works that well, you know that, you know, and you give yourself grace. It doesn't mean you have to go crazy and invite a hundred more people. No, you just have to be more consistent and more and more consistent. Yeah, the struggle this month is like bad. I had, not only did I start off the month like really bad, I had two returns and I ended up with negative SC4 in the beginning of the month. Like this just like, it was like somebody stabbed me in the heart. I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. But anyway, Success Club is a big one for me. I always, I like that's there's it's a non-negotiable like I make it happen and so I'm a little worried because it's already the 19th but I'm not stressing I know that if I continue to be consistent it's going to pay off and I know it you know it comes around and the good thing is a lot of people when they when they struggle they get discouraged and then they stop doing the things that they're doing and that just sets them back now me when I when I see that it's a hard month I up my invites, right? I send like a couple extra every single day and I up my conversations and I start to think outside the box. And that actually is a good thing because it creates an avalanche for the next month because now you're starting more conversations, you're talking to more people and so pay off. So don't, don't get discouraged, just keep pushing. You guys will do fine. And so um, the other thing that I did, okay, hi Valentina. <laughs> Sorry guys, I told you they would like escape. They found me. <laughs> Um, so, and the other thing that I would do when I was a new coach and I was struggling to find the time was I would talk to prospects on the way home and I would talk to my coaches on the way home.
right? I would schedule calls on my drive home because those are the only times that I did not have time while I was at work to post or invite or do anything. So literally that's what I did. And then when I had the days off, I would follow up with everybody. And, I, and if I didn't get a chance to get all my invites in that week, I would send it on the days that I was off. On the days that I was off, I, was also, I would also um, write, type up my, you know, schedule my posts for my challenge groups. And I would um, type up my posts and make like a little marketing plan. It was really, I've, I've always been really big on my marketing plan. I'll talk to you guys a little bit about that in a minute. But um, I, those are the things that I did on my days off. I caught up with all the extra stuff. So you have to know like what's the, essential that you have to do every day and we like to call those the vital behaviors so you know your workout your posts your invites those are your essentials and your personal development don't go a day without it because it will it will kind of set you back you really have to get in that positive mind, mindset every day and so i did those things in pockets wherever i could find it and that was that was what the beginning of my coaching was like and that's what it was like for a good year and i'll tell you guys it went from you know, me, that first year, that was when I got the freedom to be able to quit my nursing job. Because I remember thinking, this sucks. I have three kids. I have a new baby at home. And I have to work two jobs. I never see my kids. And I don't want my life to look like this. I want to be able to be home. My kids, I want to do, I've, I, we had, I had a really bad childhood. And I always wanted to do sports right? I've always been really active. I wanted to do dance. I wanted to go into soccer. I wanted to do those things. And my kids, we could afford to put them in those, but I never had the time to take them. We had the money to do it, but I didn't have the time because I was working myself to the ground. And I was like, that is not how I want my life to look like. And I swear to you, I swear to you guys, like I quit my nursing job because I wanted to put my daughter in soccer and I couldn't figure out what day I was going to take her. And I said, this is crazy. I can't live my life like this anymore. And I said, I quit. And I told my husband, I, my husband, I remember coming home from work crying, like I usually did, exhausted and drained from a shift at the hospital. And my husband said, looked at me and he said, why are you doing this to yourself? And I said, well, because we have to, and I need the money and blah, blah, blah. And I can't afford not to take it. My husband's a financial advisor. And he's like, you do realize that we pay $500 to keep our kids in childcare right now, right? And I said, yes. And he said, you make $800 a week as a nurse. That's how much I made back then. And I said, yes. He's like, do you make $300 a week as a coach? And I said, yeah, I make like 500. He's like, so you're actually paying to go to work when you could be home and be coaching and be making an extra $200. And I was like, it never, like it never hit me. And I was like, oh my gosh, you're so right. I quit. The next day I wrote my resignation letter and I said, I quit. I say, I can make more money as a coach and I would be happy and I would be home and I could be with my kids and I could take my daughter to soccer. I was like, I don't have to do this anymore. And so that's literally doing what I just told you guys. It, within a year, I was making about $500 a week, just doing those things. And so now my life looks very different. And what I found, like when I, after I quit my nursing job, I was like, oh, this is gonna be great. I'm gonna be like, top 10 because now I have all the time in the world <laughs> and I can like work the business because I never had time. And that was always my excuse. I'm like, well, I don't move forward because I don't have time. But if I have the time, I'm going to be the best coach ever. And what ended up ha happening in my life was the opposite because I don't know if this has ever happened to anybody here, but because I had all the time in the world, I had more time to lollygag and just not do the things that I was supposed to do. Like I had more time on my hands. And I feel like I was more productive when I had a little bit of time. And that's why when I recruit, I look for people who have a little bit of time because I can show them how to work with that little bit of time. But when you have a whole lot of time, it makes it more difficult. I think you guys are like, you really have to make and stick to a schedule. There is no way that you're going to move this business forward unless you start to really treat it like a business. And, to, and by that, I mean set business hours. Not be 24-7 on your phone, because that's what we tend to do. And that's what I was doing. It was not productive. I was just scrolling. I was not being productive. So you really have to work from, you have to get more intentional about how you spend your time, especially if you're doing this so you can have time for your kids. Because it really sucks when your husband gets home at 5.30 and you had the whole day at home and you're still not done because you lollygagged and you put off all the stuff that you were supposed to be doing. And now he's home, he wants to see you and you're on the computer frustrated because you didn't get all your work in yet. 
And so you really have to be smart about how you manage your time. And so I'll tell you guys now that making that transition, I went through a whole two years where I really, I felt like I was working, but I was just being busy. I wasn't really doing, I wasn't, I wasn't seeing my business move forward. And there was a reason for that. I was not being productive with my business and I wasn't being productive with the time that I had. And so this year, I started this year, um, I've always worked from a list and I've still, I've still done all the things the same. I've kept my system the same, but I've gotten really good about one, I was working nine, 10 hours a day and I was, I had nothing to show for it. I feel like I had nothing to show for it. Yeah, I was hitting success club. Yeah, I was growing my team. Yeah, I was helping my coaches. But where was I going to find people that had nine to 10 hours a day to work this business? So what I was doing was not duplicatable. And that hit me to my core because my coaches told me this. They're like, we cannot do what you do. If you guys ever heard your coaches say that, we can, I cannot do what you do. Ask them what exactly they mean because getting that feedback might be really important. And so for me, and they were like, well, you have all the time in the world to work this business. And I do not. And I was like, okay, well, I don't need nine to 10 hours to work this business. I can do this in two to three hours. So I really condensed everything I was doing so that I do not work more than three hours a day so that I can truly have that time freedom that I tell people that I have. I want it to look real. I hate the idea of portraying something that I'm not. And so what I do is exactly what I show people. And I show people this on my Instagram. I show people this on my stories. I show people this on my Facebook. And I make it a point to be as transparent as possible. I'm like, okay, I hustle. I'm not lying about it. I really do hustle. But I do so effectively. Like I have my focus time where I work. And so one of the things that you, you if you guys are in this position where I am, and you have two to three hours to work this business, I will tell you exactly what I do. So I plan ahead as much as possible. So I look at it the same way as my fitness, right? You don't go into your week not knowing what you're going to eat. If you want to be successful in your fitness journey, what do you do? You meal plan and you meal prep, right? And you get ready for the week. You write a little, you know, you write it out and you put it on your fridge and you follow that. And you know that if you deviate a lot from it, then you're not going to be as successful. The same thing I do with my business. So for example, today, I don't know if you guys have seen this. I've been using this and I really like it. This is not a change from what I was doing before. This is just something that made it more easy. It's just easier. So I don't know if you guys have seen it. Have you guys seen this? It's by Mora. Um, it's, a, it's a planner. It's called Rise Up. And I really like it because it's got all of your stuff together in one place. So you can write out your vision, your goals. You can reverse engineer your goals. It has a little month calendar, a year calendar. And then it has your weekly, your weekly planner. And I kind of color code it this way. And I can, I can, I'll be happy to answer questions later and tell you guys what the colors mean if you want to do that. But I think that part is irrelevant. The point is I plan. I, have, I know everything that's going on this week. And in order to make sure that I have balance in my life, all of the colors correspond to a different thing. Like for example, the yellow is me time, the green is work time, the blue is family time, the red is God time. So I have, so I can look at it and say, okay, am I balanced this week? Where, you know, and I can look in retrospect and see that I spend a lot of time on work or what did I do last week and where, what, where am I lacking? Where do I need to make up time for because some weeks are harder than others. For example, I'm flying two trips back to back this week. So I'm gone for work a lot. And that goes in there, right? Because that's work. And so that's taken away from family time, from work time, from me time, from, from beach body time. That's taken away from everything. So I know some weeks are going to look different. But just having an idea, obviously, I can't, nobody's going to follow any planner to a T, just like you don't follow your meal plan to a T. But having an idea really helps give it direction and it help, really helps you be intentional with your time. Like I, at any point tomorrow, because this is me, right? I'm so squirrel and so like bleh, everywhere that it'll be like 1030 and I'll be like, what am I supposed to do today? Huh? I have all these things that I need to do and what am I supposed to do? And I don't know. And I can take a deep breath and look at my planner and I'm grounded and I know exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. And I can go back to what I need to be doing and what I need to focus on because we can get really busy doing a lot of things, right? You guys know that if you own your own business, there's so much that always needs attention and there's always something that you can be doing. Do I need to start a blog? Do I need to do Instagram training? Do I need to make a post? Do I need to send my invites now? Like, what do I need to, like, you can go through so many things 
and you could be doing all these things and still not moving your business forward because you're not being focused or intentional with your time. And so that's, so just like my fitness, I plan out my week and then I do, you know, my year ahead, like, what do I want to accomplish this year? And then I do, I work by quarters. What's my goal for this quarter? And then by the quarters, I split it up, reverse engineer it. What do I need to accomplish this month? Right. And then from the month weekly and from the weekly daily, what do I need to do today? And so like, if I know my end year goal is five star elite, let's say, I know that I need to be signing new coaches, right? I need to be inviting to the coaching opportunity. I need to be posting about it, talking about it on Instagram. I need to be running coach, new coach speak, um, sneak peeks, right? I need to be doing calls with my coaches. I need to be mentoring people. And so that really guides my day. If I only have three hours each day, I should be doing at least one activity that is going towards my goal. If I haven't done it, then I know that I'm off the track. I'm off track, right? And I need to get back and get grounded. And so basically that is what I do. I don't know if I was able to keep that under 30 minutes, but I'm going to open it up for questions. You know, I honestly, you guys, there's, I don't, if you guys want to talk about this, we can talk about this. This is, seems to be what a lot of people get curious about, but um, basically my, my day looks the same every single day. I get up, I work out, I post, and then I take care of me. I do all my errands. I do my, you know, whatever I have to do at home. I'm blessed now that, all, that the kids, the girls all go to school. So I only have Valentina, which is my little one, Tuesdays and Thursdays, but that's because now I make enough money where I said, I'm going to send her to a little preschool <laughs> during the week. So she goes, she goes Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for, you know, social activities or whatever she does there, yoga or ballet, whatever they do. And I get to have time at home so I can go get my massages and do my, take care of me and do, you know, my stuff that I like to do. And I way I'm a little bit of a better mom because when I have the kids full time, all the time, I'm a little crazy. And so that was what I chose to do. And so I work my business every day from two to five. When my kids get home, or when my, my husband gets home with my kids, I'm done. My computer goes off and I'm, my, I'm with my family and I'm present. And I'm like, no more work. <laughs> and so that was the balance that I needed. That's what I wanted. That's what I, that, that was the vision that I had for my life. I wanted to have... I wanted to be present for my kids, right? Because I didn't have them. Both my kids, both my parents always worked and I was pretty much bringing up myself and I didn't want my kids to do that. I wanted my kids to know that and to know me and for us to have quality time together, family dinners, you know, talk. <laughs> and so those are the things that I created and that's what the Beachbody business has brought, has brought to my life. But really it, it took me, it wasn't just like, oh, it just happened. You know, I worked a business and then it popped up. It took me really being intentional and really getting clear on what that vision looked like for me and what I wanted. Now, obviously working two to three hours a day, I'm not going to be a top coach, right? I know what that takes because I've seen it firsthand and that's not my vision. That's not what I want for my life at all. I think it's awesome and I love the people that do that and I have that kind of drive. And obviously you can take whatever I'm doing right now in two to three hours and 10 times that, and you will get 10 times the results. But uh, you have to be honest with yourself. What do you want? And is what you're doing in alignment with what you want, right? Because we all want different things. We don't all want the same things. So I'll open it up for questions. If you guys have questions, you can unmute yourselves and ask. I didn't have anything long or planned, but basically, because I keep my business very simple, I want it to be duplicatable. I want anybody to walk into my team to be able to just do what I do, you know, be it the part-time coaching that I did when I, be, when I started or the full-time coaching. I call it full-time, even though I only work like 10 hours a week. <laughs> I still call it full-time, but I'm home most of the time. So to me, it's full-time because it brings me a full-time income. So where did you say, hold on, let me pull it up. What did you say about the Rise Up Planner? Okay, so I actually just talked to Maura because um, she said that she's revising it. So I would just wait because this planner, I bought it on Amazon. So I think you can, you guys can still go on Amazon. It's, it's still on Amazon. Yeah, it's still on Amazon. And she said that there's only a few left, but um, she's just revising it and sending another one because this is supposed to last you all year. And she said that she started using it in January and she's already almost done with it. So she's revising it so that it will be a year. 
but um but it's still there i still i mean still valid even if it doesn't last a year i think it's still very much worth it so i think it was thirty dollars i want to say it was thirty dollars worth the investment i used to do this the same color coding thing kim carver has a really good training on this i learned this from him the color coding stuff he he taught me this he had a really good training i believe if you look for it it's on youtube and moira also if you buy the planner she has a couple of YouTube videos as well that you can, mine's a, it looks a little different because I didn't do, I never watched her videos, so I don't know what she does. I was doing this before, but in, on an Excel spreadsheet. And now I do it like this, which is, I like this better. I like the, I'm a paper and pen girl all the way. Um, I don't like the electronic stuff. So this, I love this planner. And I love that it's, everything is on one place. Like literally you can write your invites on here too like the, the names of the people you invite. So you literally don't need to have any other, you know, like you don't, you don't need a monthly planner. You don't need, um, this is it. You, and I love that I can carry this everywhere. It's just one book. Very simple to use, very simple. And so you guys, my, my coaches are loving it. Nobody ever had ever done it. I've been talking about this for five years and then I bought the planner and I said, buy the planner and they bought the planner and they love it. <laughs> any other questions? You guys are quiet. I don't have a question, but you're super inspiring as a mom, so thank you. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you. I feel like I know you guys. I see some new faces that I've never seen before, but I see Ariel over there. I see Chelsea. I see yes, yeah, you Hannah. I see I see where's Blair. I see some familiar faces. I know you guys. I feel like I'm part of the family. <laughs> we did run a lot of stuff together last year. We should do another challenge group together. That was fun. But having, I'm seeing like I'm having to innovate like recently because I feel like people are really like disconnected even from social media, right? It's getting harder and harder to get people and the challenge groups to stay engaged and everything. Are you guys finding the same thing or is it just me? Right? It's like they're disconnecting. I think people are a little fed up with um, social media. And so we have to like keep thinking outside the box to get people re-engaged all the time. <laughs> One thing that they like, my, I mean, my challengers are liking a lot the, um, the group uh, workouts, the virtual workout rooms. I don't know if you guys do that. I think you guys do too. But that's one thing. What else are you guys doing to keep people engaged? Anything fun? We did a challenge last month, like a team challenge, where we like grouped people up into teams to kind well, of get them. Um, Ariel and I just um, joined up and we opened it up to HYP to do a new round of 80 day obsession starting tomorrow. And we have over 80 people in the tracker app already who have accepted and everything. That's so, awesome. I'm really yeah. thinking about doing 80 day obsession too. We usually use Facebook, so we're switching it up because we see a lot of the top people are trying out the challenge tracker and social media is sort of scaring me with like blocking and ba shadow banning. So I hope it as well. I mean, I really liked 80 day obsession, so it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, 80 day obsession was fun. It's a good program. It really is a good program. When people commit to it, you get great results. Yeah, I'm finding the same thing with the challenge tracker. I love the challenge tracker, actually. I wish people would be, I don't know. I think, I feel like people like Facebook more, but I love that. Like, I think for coaches, the tracker app is so much easier. Like, if you shout out your challenges, you can go very easily and see who's, you know, who has logged in, who has worked out. Because a lot of times on Facebook, people just watch. They're just, uh, it's like my husband, I tell him he's a, uh, what is it that I tell them that he does? He creeps. <laughs> they creep, but they don't say anything. So you don't know if they're actually like, are they watching or are they reading it or are they just looking over it? So I feel like the, the challenge tracker is better for that. Better engagement, much easier. Any questions, guys? If not, I'll let you guys go. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, yeah, I feel like I am part of the family. <laughs> All right, let's take a picture then, of course, because we, if we didn't, we don't take a picture and don't post it on social media, it didn't happen. So everybody see cheese. I'm pulling up my little screenshot here. All right, and you guys are ready. Say cheese. 
All right, I'm going to look like it says Dr. Stephanie, <laughs> but that's okay. All right, guys, so I'll let you guys go. Have a good night. Let me stop recording this.